In this video, we're going to keep working with configurations and we're going to set up our sales information. So I'm going to go to stores and configuration and I'm going to collapse the general tab and I'm going to go to sales and expand that and I'm going to choose sales. And in the sales area, in the general information, that's going to stay the same. On the checkout total sort order, this is what order this is going to show on the invoice. So you're going to see the subtotal first because it's number 10, and then the discount second because it's number 20, then shipping third because it's number 30, and then the fixed product tax is going to show next because it's 35, and then the regular tax is going to show next because it's 40, and then the grand total is going to show last because it's 100. So you can reorder these at any time you want to by just changing the number value of these, and it will reorder them in the system. And it will allow you to reorder as long as you have allow reorder set to yes. So we can use all of the default information for now, but later if you want to change the order of everything on your invoice, you can do that. We're also going to allow uh, zero grand totals. And then for the invoice and packing slip design, we can put a logo that will show on our PDF printouts and also a logo that will show on our HTML print view. So all you have to do is click choose file and choose the file that you want to add for your image for the PDF printout and for the HTML printout. And it does give you the dimensions. It says uh, 200 by 50, so pay attention to that so it will actually load your logo. Then we have an area for our address. So we'll put our address in there. The next one is minimum order amount. I'm just going to leave everything here the default. And then on the dashboard, I'm going to leave it default. The Chrome settings, I'm going to leave it default. Gifting options, I'm going to leave those default. The minimum advertised price. This is a feature that when you set it up, that you your price will not show if it's less than the MSRP. A lot of times if you're selling a product that is made by another company, uh, they'll tell you that you cannot sell it below a certain price. So if you happen to have a, a lower price on the front end, that price will not show. So right now it says enable map. I'm going to go ahead and disable map because I don't need it. I'm not going to be selling anything where I'm worried about the MSRP. Then instant purchase is also enabled. So those are all the settings that I need to set in this particular area, which is sales and then the category of sales. So I'm going to click save config. And now we're going to move on to sales emails. There's a lot of information in this area of sales emails. There's general settings, order, there's comments, invoice, invoice comments, shipment, shipment comments, credit memo, and credit memo comments. And for all of these, you can actually leave it as default. There's nothing in here that we must change. If you leave it by default, it works perfectly fine. So for sales emails, we're going to leave everything the default. And now let's take a look at PDF printouts. In this area, there's not near as much as the previous one. We've got invoice, shipment, and credit memo. And all of these are enabled by default, and that's exactly the way we want it. So we can just leave the default information there. And the next one we're going to look at is tax. And we have a lot of settings here in the tax area, but most of them should be OK if we leave them the default. I'm going to expand each one. We're going to take a look. So vertex settings. Uh, you can click here to find out more about Vertex, but we're going to go ahead and leave that as disabled. And then the Vertex company information doesn't need to be filled out. Shipping product codes. These are the list of available map methods for uh, mapping in Vertex, which we're not going to need, so we can leave it default. Tax classes. Um, all of these can be left as default, and then we'll probably do some more setup when we manage our tax classes under stores, tax rules, and add new tax rules. The calculation settings, we can leave all of those default. Default tax destination, we want to make sure that it says US, which it does, so everything's all right there. Price display settings, uh, we want to exclude tax in the price display, so everything's OK there. Shopping cart display, uh, everything is OK there. And then orders, invoices, credit memos, and display settings. Everything's okay there. And then fixed product taxes. We want to make sure that FP 
FPT or fixed product taxes are not enabled. And then everything else is default, so it's fine. Everything here in the tax area, we're gonna leave as default. We're not gonna change anything. And we're gonna go ahead and click Save Configuration. And the next thing we're going to look at is checkout. So when I click that, we can take a look at our checkout settings. We've got checkout options and we can keep the default for that. For the shopping cart, we can keep the default for that. For my cart link, we can keep the default for that. Shopping cart sidebar, we can keep the default for that. And payment failed emails, we can keep the default for that. So all of that's going to remain the same. And the next area we'll look at is shipping settings. And here we need to identify the origin of where the products are coming from. So the country for me is United States. The state is going to be Mississippi, the zip code, and the city, and the street address. And then I don't have a second line to my address. Wherever these products are originating from, I need to make sure that address is inside the system. And then the shipping policy parameters, I'm going to go ahead and leave that the default and then I'm gonna go ahead and save the configuration. All right, everything's saved, so I'm gonna go down and do multi-shipping settings. And in this setting, this is where you can allow the customer to choose to ship to multiple addresses. By default, it's set to yes, and the maximum quantity of a shipping addresses is set at 100. I'm gonna just leave that the default, and we'll keep going to shipping methods. Now shipping is a big one, and we're gonna just do the bare minimum for this video, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the different ways you can go. So the first one is flat rate, and this is the one that's enabled by default. And a flat rate just means that you're gonna do a fixed rate per item on each item that sells. So you can see that it's enabled, and it's titled flat rate. The method name is fixed. The type is per item. You can actually change that if you want to from per item to per order. So you can put a flat rate of shipping on each product item or a flat rate of shipping per order. We're gonna put it on per item, which is the default. And I'm gonna just check mark the system value again. And then the shipping price is set to $5. If you wanna change that, you can uncheck system value and change that to whatever you want to. And then to calculate the handling fee, you can have a processing and handling fee. And if you wanna have a fee, you can set it as fixed or you can set it as a percentage of the price of the product. I'm gonna set it to fixed and I'm gonna leave it at zero. So that's everything configured there. Now if we go to free shipping, that is disabled. And that's if you wanna allow free shipping. Table rates allow you to set up a shipping price based on where it's being shipped and the price of the product. We're going to set this as disabled for now, but we'll revisit this in another video. Magento also has a shipping program and you can request a shipping account, but we're gonna leave this as disabled for now. And then you can set up a UPS account, a United States Postal Service account, a FedEx account, and a DHL account to be able to ship as well. We're gonna leave all of that default and the only one we're gonna work with is flat rate right now. And we're doing a fixed flat rate of $5 per item for shipping. So let's go ahead and save that configuration. And now those settings are saved and we'll go down here to the Google API, we'll leave as default. And let's check out the payment methods. For payment methods, we wanna make sure that our merchant location is in the United States or wherever you're at. And then you can set up your own payment methods. If you wanna use PayPal, you can set that up. Braintree, you can set that up. And then there's several other payment methods you could choose to use. You can also do a bank transfer. For me, I'm gonna set that to no. And there's more options, including purchase orders and authorize.net. And we'll do a separate video to configure the payment processors and how to completely set them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my configuration so far. And then down below, I've got fraud protection. This allows protection for your store to prevent fraud. Uh, you can set this up if you want to. There is a monthly fee to enable this solution. So this is something that you could set up later to make sure that your store is protected against fraud. So that's everything in sales. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about advanced features. So I'll see you in the next video.